in your brain is the most powerful weapon. I talk about that in one of these chapters. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, yeah, it's great. We're up to date. We, you know, you, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, when you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to. You may have a best friend you're going to. But there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. It's over. And all of that you learned from your own brain. You yes. didn't Google this shit. No. You didn't buy books. It didn't exist. This shit didn't exist. I couldn't even fucking spell Google back then. <laughs> this shit didn't exist, man. What, what existed for me was, okay, man, how am I going to fucking make this work? And, I, and all I knew back then was hard work. The only way anything gets accomplished. That's all I heard back in those days. You got to work hard. You got to work hard. I'm not getting how to, I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the fuck's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Still not getting it. Read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. Okay, well, I can't, I got to write out every fucking thing I do. And then write it out again. And write it out again. And guess what happened? I got it. I got it. I can't swim. I'm negative buoyant. Go back again. I can't swim. Go back again. Go back again. Go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back until the shit just becomes, your mind will say, fuck. Okay. We're going to figure it out. It'll find a way. Because he is not going to stop. It's not like I'm going to try one more time. No. I'm gonna, it's just like alarm clock goes off. Boop. We're going back. I can't read right. We're going back. I gave myself no way out, and my mind realized that. They said, okay, we're going to adapt and overcome now. So you have to t teach your mind this is the new normal, this and you better get with the fucking program. That's right. And as soon as it realizes that, that you're serious, you're serious. then it adapts. I'm not playing a game. Right. But if it thinks you're playing a game, it knows, it and knows. it won't adapt. It, it, <laughs> like a lot of people say, like when I say trying hard, they, your mind knows, man. You know, this guy's bullshitting me, man. This guy's lying. There's no truth behind it. When I was in Navy still training, people go, how were you there for 18 months? The program was only six months long. You were in three hell weeks in one year. No one's ever done that. How did you do that? I talk about the new norm. When I lived in a $7 a month place and I was growing up for a short period of time, I loved it. I didn't know any, I, I didn't know any different. That was my norm. Once we moved out of that place, we moved to a $236 a month place. I was like, shit, I never want to go back to that little piece of shit. But if you go back to that $7 a month place and you realize this is where I live, this is all I got, your mind says, Roger that, this is home. So when I was going to Navy SEAL training for 18 months and going back through all the hard parts over and over again, I told myself after the first time, I knew it was going to be a long journey there. My body was breaking down. It was, it was just how it was going on. I said, you know what? This is my new norm. So my mind said, it's like going to work. Like you go to work, you put your suit and tie on. I go into suffering every day. Every day suffering, being broken, duct taping my feet up, stress fractures, shin splints, being broken. This is my new norm. And your mind says, if we're not broken, this ain't normal. We got to be broken. So then your mind starts to get tougher and tougher and more callous. People go, how did you run on broken feet? Broken, broken shins. My mind knew this is how we operate. We're in, we're in Navy SEAL training. This is what we are. I became hell. And that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell. Nothing. I became, I love God. But for a short period of time, I became the devil. Because that was hell. I became, I became the boss, the owner, the CEO 
of Navy SEAL training. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself in wherever it is, and you become that. When I was 297 pounds, and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then, 297 pound, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making $1,000 a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduate Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. That's why people gotta understand, what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, where you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. My new norm is that, wow, this isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard. Is that, and so people listening to us that maybe are at 20% or 30%, how do they shatter that myth that they've been telling themselves? you know, about, yeah, I'm, I'm going hard, I'm going max, and yet they're not seeing the results. Like, how do they actually shake themselves out of that? Because there, there's a great quote, I think it's by this guy named Richard Feynman, who says, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you're the easiest person to fool. Mm -hmm. So we construct these crazy Disneyland realities in our brain, right? And right. then feed it back to ourselves. How do you shatter that? Well, your first thing, you, like, you're fighting, we all have two people. We all have two people. And I'm not saying you're crazy. We have the easy voice, which is that 20% telling yourself that you're, I'm easy at 90% of my full potential, maybe 100% at that 20%. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice. That, that's that mommy holding you saying, it's going to be okay. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you. Just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. That's where you want to be at. So that's that one voice. This other voice that we walk very far away from is the voice saying, hey man, you ain't doing shit. So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this land. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. The voice saying things to you that aren't nice. That it's in our head saying, you know what man, dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're not, you're not amount, I mean, and, it, and it's not putting yourself down. People take this the wrong way in this new society. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth. And the truth isn't in the 20%. The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look, man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80% is suffering Pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness, and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you got to go through all of this shit. So a lot of us know that. We know. We do know deep down. Yeah, I can get over here, but over here, man, this is much better because I got to go through this journey that is not fun. This, this from 20 to 100%, this shit in, the, in between is not fun. So we decide to live over here. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly. It's, it's not a magic trick. There's nothing I talk about in that book that's a magic trick. It's all back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like, we don't even know that, that, that we're doing it. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says, no, you just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you got to break yourself off, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go is gonna be, it, it, 
there's going to be more times you do something that, that you don't want to do than you are going to want to do it. And that's, that, that's your new norm. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. So I'm here, minding my fucking business, trying to relax. The driver has the fucking, his playlist on mute, so he can't hear any music. Me and my girl are here talking. She glances over at the fucking playlist. What pops up? Fucking going the distance. It brings me back when I was 300 pounds, trying to lose fucking weight to get the Navy SEALs. My goal was to go out, I had a plan. My plan is to go out there and run four fucking miles. But guess what? Everybody's got a fucking plan so they can hit in the fucking mouth. That's for Mike Tyson. So when your plan fails, when those bolts and fucking laws get too heavy, when you get knocked the fuck down in the fucking canvas, when everything falls apart in your life and your plan is fucked up, what the fuck are you gonna do? There's only one motherfucking option. Stay fucking hard. So what's your fucking excuse? Is it too cold where you live? Is it too hot where you live? Does it rain too fucking much? Now it's time for some real fucking talk. Maybe you're the only black person applying for a fucking job. Maybe you're the only female. Maybe you're the only fucking gay person. Job, whatever the fuck it may be. Maybe that shit's in your fucking head. Maybe that's your excuse for not being better. Life's a real big fucking picture. When I was young, all those things got in my head. Black, fucking not smart enough, single mom, all that bullshit own space in my head. If you're allowing people and things and situations to own space in your fucking head, you're losing. Last thing, life's one big fucking head game. You play with yourself. If you lose, it's because you allow life to get in your fucking head. Stay hard. Everybody, it's Groundhog's Day again for David Goggins. If you pan it down here, you see it's about 3 o'clock in the morning and there's not a car or a person in sight. If you pan over here, it's the same thing. Not a car or a person. <laughs> strength at where I get my strength I get it from a lot of places but right now this morning I'm getting it from there's not a motherfucker that's up there's not a car there's not a person everybody's in their bed sleep dreading that it's a Monday hate it's a Monday and I'm loving it I'm loving that where everybody's getting weaker I'm getting stronger it's not about the running the swimming the push-ups the sit-ups it's about what those things do for your mentality you don't get better on the daggone couch you get better by coming out here and getting the fuck after it every daggone day. Stay hard.